morning and welcome back to the Seasons of Self-Actualization mini podcast. My name is Shyla, and I'm so grateful to get to be here with you today. I would like to encourage you to take a few deep breaths with me before we start this podcast episode and try your best to continue on your own afterwards and you can always feel free to pause this episode and try to connect with yourself a little bit through deep breaths or some stretches or other things that you feel ground you so first we're gonna take a few deep breaths together so let's do an inhale for four counts hold that for seven counts three four five six seven and slowly exhale through mouth for eight five six seven eight if you can do that a couple more times on your own that'd be great this week's affirmation is i am continuously discovering new things about myself i am continuously discovering new things about myself I am continuously discovering new things about myself. In the last few episodes, we have been talking about how to navigate intense and uncomfortable thoughts, emotions, and starting to understand the process of building a compassionate voice within our minds that we can use to help support us to get us to where we actually want to go in life. So it's time to start exploring your internal world a little bit more. I want to invite you to start on your self-discovery journey. If I asked you to write out a list of things or a list of qualities that you love about yourself, could you do that like off the top of your head? If I asked you, do you know why you're doing what you're doing and what it means to you? If you don't know the answer to either one of those questions, then this podcast is specifically intended for you because it makes sense that you wouldn't be able to write out a list of things you love when you don't know them. There is a great quote that I heard from Jay Shetty, who he's my inspiration. He said, when you are feeling unfulfilled in life, it's not because you're not doing enough. It's because you're not doing enough of what you love. And I want to present this to you because oftentimes I feel like we make ourselves really busy and then we're confused at the end of the day why we don't feel content and why we don't feel happy and good. But how are we going to get closer to doing the things that we really want to do and doing the things that we want to love if we haven't asked ourselves what that is and made a plan for it? It's hard to know answers to questions we haven't actually spent non-distracted time thinking about. And notice how I said non-distracted time, because there's a big difference between sitting on the couch alone with yourself, but on your phone versus being somewhere that you don't have any distractions around you. How can you get to know yourself and what you want to be doing and what you love and things you like about yourself if you aren't spending sufficient undistracted time with yourself. It's hard to be present with ourselves when we are on autopilot. So we have to be intentional and we have to create awareness around being present with ourselves. We have to set the intention to spend non-distracted, fully present time with ourselves. It is time to date yourself. It's time to start dating this version of yourself. This can become uncomfortable when we haven't done this in a long time or when we haven't been practicing empowering ourselves with our minds. We can feel a sense of unpredictability and loss of control within ourselves and that's obviously not really a nice feeling, which is why I've been talking about cultivating a safe environment within your mind and building that compassionate voice. So if you haven't seen the last few podcast episodes talking about that, I would say I would try to start there because I think creating a safe and comforting space within your mind is definitely a really important step before you, you know, jump into the deep end and just expect yourself to be able to completely navigate your mind. I believe I started talking about these things from 
podcast episode number six onwards. To continue for today, I want to acknowledge the fear and resistance we still have to spend time with ourselves and our minds, even when we have been practicing creating a safe space. Because like I mentioned before, it is a human tendency to have intrusive thoughts. So the more that we can move through it, the better of a relationship we're gonna have with ourselves ultimately. And that is so significant and so valuable. And we all know this, like that the relationships with ourselves is really valuable, but we don't really often take time to date ourselves. So if this is still overwhelming to you, I want you to just start with practicing noticing your interests and disinterests and exploring this a little bit more. And if you haven't given yourself the time or space to think about that in a while, I think that's a great place to start because you're not asking yourself like a super deep question or like hopefully nothing scary is popping up. So you can always start with just what are your current likes and dislikes. That's like a great warm up. And in terms of dating yourself, I want to point out that this is hopefully a positive approach to getting to know yourself and your mind and your inner world. I have heard a great way to also do this is through meditation, but I feel like meditation is scary for a lot of people. So if that is something that is a little bit scary to you, then maybe the positive approach of dating yourself could be fun. And it also doesn't have to be a big grand gesture either. It can be super simple where you're sitting with your cup of coffee in the morning and asking yourself how you feel and what you've been liking to do lately, where you find pleasure in things and what you haven't been liking lately, kind of checking in with yourself. But it can also be a bigger, grander gesture where you pack a picnic and you go sit in a field eating fruit and pondering about life. Like... It is all up to you and it's just important to feel like you are safe and taking the first step. And whenever you are doing this, you have to also keep in mind that you don't want to be in a place where you're gonna be constantly distracted because that is not the point. Like on a date with anyone, you can also just start by feeling out the vibe start asking questions like these warm-up questions like i said earlier about asking yourself your likes and dislikes what kind of things would you be asking someone else on a date you can start doing that for yourself you can literally look up 50 questions to ask on the first date and ask yourself those i don't feel like we ask ourselves the same questions we ask other people on a date and sometimes actually a lot of the times i found when you ask yourself questions in general, it's usually not about the answers. It's kind of about stimulating new thoughts and ideas. It's about asking questions that provoke new thoughts within you. And like with a date, when you start with these warm-up questions, you can move deeper and deeper into other questions. And the beauty of being on a date with yourself is that there's no pressure to receive an answer quickly either. So if you find a question that you don't know the answer to, but you would like to, that's a great place to pause and to think about and tell your next date. The more we get to know ourselves and really simple basic things like our likes and dislikes, but also the things that are are going to excite us in life or not, the more that we can then reevaluate what we are doing day to day and start to move closer to what it is we actually want to be doing. And it can be, like I said, super small and it can always lead us to other ideas and other things. I think it's right now about the intention, about the awareness to create a connection with your inner world and your mind. And obviously this is going to be a really long journey and it can be exciting and it can be hard and it can be everything in between and it's just beautiful and yeah if you have been on this journey for a while now I would also invite you to look up new questions or go to take yourself out and do something new so my homework for you this week is to take yourself on a date And I want you to keep two things in mind with this, kind of what I mentioned earlier. I want it to be a safe and non-distractive place for you. So a safe place where 
you know, <laughs> you're going to be okay and you know you're going to be okay. But also not a place where there's a bunch of people that you get distracted by because you love to observe people or a lot of screaming children or your phone nearby like you want undistracted time i want to invite you secondly to do something a little bit new something that's going to stimulate either a new thought or a new feeling a new experience something along those lines so find this perfect combination for you and like i said it's not about just spending time alone it's spending time with your thoughts so I know this was a super short episode because it's really about the action here. I also don't want this to overwhelm you. I feel like I personally, whenever I don't have the time or space or energy to, yeah, really like make cut out time for that, I do try to let my thoughts think and sit with my thoughts when I'm traveling on the way to work. Um, and whenever I can have a lunch break or find a moment for myself, like it is whatever works for you. I want to thank you very much for taking the time to listen to this podcast episode. If you enjoyed it, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving something down in the comments. And I hope to see you on Monday to set ourselves up for another great week.